Hi everybody, I'm in Illinois, Decatur, Illinois. And today we're gonna to talk about the switch. The switch from the front car position to the rear car position. In other words, you're driving in front of the truck and uh, now you have to get to the back of the truck because you are going from a, a, a two-way, a two-lined road to a divided highway. When you drive on a divided highway, you have to drive it in the in the back of the truck. If you are driving on a two-lane road, you have to drive it ahead of a truck. So the switch from the front position to the rear position is kind of important. The switch from the rear position to the front isn't that difficult, but the one going from the front to the rear takes a little bit of learning. Okay. Now, before we are going to talk about that, I want to let you know at the end of the video, I am going to tell you about a carrier that you can work for. And that is a carrier that I personally think is very, very good. And let me tell you another thing. This is the only channel that will give you these kind of data. So don't miss that stuff. All right. So now let's get into the switch. Okay. So I'm not driving ahead of the truck and I'm keeping myself to the right and he's passing me on the left. Here the truck is getting in front of me now. And he's driving off to get onto the ramp and then to the interstate. Here's another example like this. The truck I'm pulled, I pulled out onto a, a shoulder and the truck is passing me on the left. I get behind him and we drive out onto the ramp. Here's another one. I'm going here to the left. This is where the ramp is. And here I'm, I am on the ramp and then there is a little side ramp coming in and I'm using this to get out of his way. And he's passing me on the left. And we are now going on to the interstate. Here's the same thing again from the rear camera. I'm driving onto the ramp. I'm moving out of his way using that little additional ramp there. He's passing me on the left and I'm falling behind him, making sure that car does not get too close to the load. Next example, similar one, but with more traffic. Okay, I'm going onto the ramp. Now you see that pickup truck there, that gray one is on there and I'm waving at him, telling him, move on, move on, move on, uh, you know. I'm going to take your space and he get, he's happy to get onto the road and the truck is now going to pass me on the left. You don't want to block these cars when they are sitting there, you know, that's not good. Now you can see this whole thing from the rear again, from the rear camera. I'm driving over to the right and you can see now that I'm actually by doing this, blocking this traffic there. So you can't cut in front of the truck. And I'm now falling in behind the truck, keeping everybody safely away from the load. This one is a different one. I'm already on the ramp, waiting on the ramp for him to pass me on the left. Now you can see this is a very tight spot. He's sticking one foot over uh, the fork line. I am about one foot away from the load. So this kind of thing has to be done careful. Left, left here. So now we have a, a one where I go, where I go from the uh, rear to the front. Very simple. You just pass it. You know.
And they're almost all like that, the rear from the front. You're basically ahead of him and can take full control. Now this is different one. I'm blocking here the left lane. So he can come over to the left because he has to swing out to the left in order to get onto the ramp on the right. Now I am going to pass him on the right again, going from the rear to the front. And basically I'm doing this like that in order to free the ramp from traffic. I'm telling the person to please move back and I'm doing this always very politely. And I thank them for doing this. And here you can see this from the rear camera now, he's pulling to the left. And uh, he's coming in onto the ramp. It is a bit of a different scene there, you know. It is. It was basically sort of a freeway. Uh, it was, you know, a four-lane freeway. Uh, but still, same thing applies here, you know. Now we're coming to the tips and tricks section. Today we're going to talk about a carrier with the name of ATS, Anderson Trucking Services. ATS is a oversized load carrier and a carrier of lots of other things too. I'm going to tell you how to get started with them as a new pilot car driver. You will work for them as an independent contractor and they will send you an actual contract and agreement by email that you will sign with them. They will ask you about your experience in one of the forms. So before you fill out this form, make sure you have received your pilot car certification and make sure you have a Washington or Utah license because ATS is driving in all US states. Here is what you will write in this section about your experience. You are certified as a pilot car driver. If you have a commercial driver's license, put this down in this section as well. Don't worry if you don't have one. And because you have been watching the videos of my channel, you can put down that you have been grooved in by me as a pilot car driver. Literally, you can say, I have been grooved in as a pilot car driver by Herbert Schwarzgruber. And you can write down that you have watched all the videos of Pilot Car 101. They now know you are new to this business and they will treat you accordingly, setting you up with loads that are the right gradient for new pilot car drivers. Now, here is the next thing about them, which is great. They pay very well. Currently, they pay $1.85 for a chase car and a lead car. Additionally, they give you deadhead money. If you're far away from a load, they will pay you to go there. Uh, anything over 300 miles, and I say at that point, well, do you have some deadhead money available to get there? Now, you're not exactly actually contracted to ATS when you start to work for them. You are contracted to their pilot car division, which is called Sentinel Pilot Car Services. And that division is made up of dispatchers that specifically service pilot car drivers. On the screen, you will see a phone number. This is the phone number you call in order to sign up with them. They will not put you with loads that deal with wind equipment. They want you to have a certain amount of trips before they let you close to wind. Now, the best part about them is they will keep you busy if you stay on their main lanes of traffic. There, there's a lot of loads that came out, come out of Houston that are being taken by ATS. So you kind of literally can go in a circle, you know, out of Houston, somewhere, maybe Car uh, uh, Colorado, uh, get sent over to North Carolina, come back down to Houston, or go directly after Decatur, maybe go up even uh, to Chicago, come back down to Houston straight from there with a load. It's tons of money. The other thing is, and this is the best part about them, they give you the money right after the trip is done. Meaning within two, three days, you will have your money in your bank account you know, as an ACH transfer. And they do not charge any fees for this. They do not collect any uh, finder's commission or broker commission or dispatcher commission, nothing. You should start with that company if you're a new driver.